Hey, this is How to Make Dinner. I'm Paula, and today I'm recreating one of Rachel Ray's 30 Minute Meals. I grew up watching cooking shows. I love them all. I love, you know, Giada and Bobby and Emeril, and before that, like the urban peasant for you Canadians and Barefoot Contessa, you gotta love her. And of course, I watched a lot of Rachel Ray. She was on every single day, cranking out those 30 minute meals. And now that I'm doing my own food content, I'm completely blown away that she was able to do a full dinner for like a family of four in 30 minutes. All at the same time, she was being entertaining and charming and chatty and she was chopping away and cooking and it just blows my mind that she was able to do that. So I thought it would be fun to try it myself. So I dug around in the Rachel Ray archives on YouTube and I found this video for chicken cordon bleu burgers with uh, like roasted wedge potato fries and a little desserty thing. So I thought that one looks good. Why not? <laughs> Why not give it a try? So I'm going to try and do this whole dinner in 30 minutes, real time, Let's, let's just see how it goes. All right, it's 7.06, start the clock and go. Okay, so first I'm going to the fridge to get my chicken and some ham and I think that's it. I also have some baby new potatoes. I've already messed up because the first thing I'm supposed to do is turn on my burner and I'm gonna crank it all the way and crank my oven. It's not a knob, it's gonna take a minute. There we go, turn the fan on. Okay, so first things first, prep the potatoes because they take a while. So, I've got these cute little fingerling potatoes. I've already come to terms with the fact that my kitchen's gonna be a complete mess at the end of this. And they're in there for 25 minutes. So I, I'm kind of trying to think, how small do I have to cut them? I think some of them should probably go into quarters. Some of them are probably okay in half. So I watched this episode earlier today and like, it just boggles my mind. Like I didn't, I totally took for granted how much skill it took to pull this off and every single day. I feel like there was an episode on every single day. It's just really impressive. <laughs> so I hope this goes well. And if it does go well, and even if it doesn't, please let me know if you're into this format. Cause I kind of want to do a bunch of them and challenge myself. Okay. So I'm going to collect some dishes here that I've put aside. She had all of hers piled at the back of her kitchen too. So I think it's fair game to have a few things kind of semi-prepared. I have a baking sheet there. I'm gonna line it with parchment paper. Not a very good, not really the right size, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna toss these potatoes with a bit of olive oil or grapeseed oil, because it's what I have here. And she did like steak seasoning and a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna do garlic powder. Paprika. <laughs> and, oh, I'm gonna keep this stuff because I'm gonna add it to the burger mix as well. Um, Maybe some dried oregano? Sure. And probably some salt because I can't not. Oh. Fair bit of salt. Okay, toss, toss. These are going in the oven now. Okay, 
Right off the bat, I know that oven is not very hot. They're gonna take longer than 25 minutes, but we'll see. Okay, next up. I have my instructions here. Uh, potato, da, 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 put them in the oven, burgers. So I'm gonna start on the burgers now. I have to chop half a shallot, which I have here. And her shallot was really big. So I might actually use this whole, no, I'll probably use half still. I've already broken another rule, which Rachel Ray always has her old GB, as she calls it, or the garbage bowl handy. Now that it's 2021 and we know about climate change, it's the compost bowl, but same general spirit. I don't have one. I'll get one. Shallots are awkward. For now, my compost bowl is this part of the counter. All right. Okay. Gonna shop, shop the shallot. Mm. Yeah. You know what? I need to do the whole thing. I don't use shallots very often, mostly because they're just small and fiddly. I like things to be <laughs> clunky and big and <laughs> easy to handle. Come on. I wonder how I'm doing so far in terms of time. I already feel behind because of this shallot peeling. I wonder if she had someone like pre-loosen her shallot skins or something. I miss the days of real cooking shows a lot. I talk about it a lot. I wrote a blog post about it. Um, I am so, so annoyed with all the, like the competition shows. It's like, give me a break people. Okay, shallots are going in the bowl. And then a bunch of other stuff went in there too. Seasonings, like same seasonings as before. I'm just gonna do garlic powder, paprika, and oregano. This grill is hot. I can feel the heat rising. I think that's it. And then she just put the chicken in and mixed it. But before she did that, she got a bit of oil and put it on a plate because I guess you're gonna have to dredge the patties in oil. So this way you can get them done without getting your oil bottle all, all chickeny. Very clever. Okay, I had, this is ground chicken, it was on sale. It's about to expire. <laughs> Oops. And then I'm just gonna mix it up. I'm not really usually a fan of ground chicken because it's kind of weird. I thought about getting ground turkey. This is extra lean ground chicken, so I guess it's like chicken breast, but Still not my favorite ground meat. Okay, and then I'm doing the classic divide it in the bowl in four kind of thing and then make it into patties. It's kind of sticky. Actually, to help with the stickiness, you can just get your hands a little bit wet and that'll help. So I guess this was about a pound of chicken. So these are like quarter pound patties.
All right, fourth patty done. I'm just gonna flip those around and cover them with oil and then get them onto this hot grill. Now it's time to go get some other stuff from the fridge for the burgers. So, some lettuce, which she had pre-washed, so I pre-washed mine too. And some tomatoes, and some mayo and Dijon mustard. For a little sauce action. And then, she just made this quick sauce and I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. Uh, it was just mayo, Dijon mustard, and tarragon. But I'm gonna use rosemary because I don't have tarragon. I've never bought tarragon, I don't think, in my life. So I'm just gonna do a really mustardy mayo mix. And then Tiny bit of rosemary, not too much. I love rosemary. It's spring now, so there's like little, little like sprigs, uh, like rosemary shoots, like the fresh little new springy ones popping out. So they're a little bit more tender than the really tough woody, woody kind of branches. Okay, there's that. Get my spoon back and I'll just give that a little mix. Okay, boom. All right, next was to turn the potatoes. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, not even close. <laughs> it's only 719. We've been cooking for 13 minutes. Oh, I'm definitely gonna do this in time. No problem. Okay, well, the potatoes are still cooking and the burgers are frying, but they're gonna be a few more minutes before I can flip them. So we're gonna go to a quick commercial break and I'll see ya when we're back. <laughs> All right, we're back. Another thing I found fascinating about Rachel's show was that every time they come back from the break, she would reintroduce herself. And I guess that's because TV, like you used to change a channel and you would just like click to a channel and land on something and you wouldn't know necessarily what it was. But this is YouTube where you choose what you watch generally. So I don't think I need to reintroduce myself. Welcome back to How to Make Dinner. We're making chicken cordon blue burgers in the style of Rachel Ray's 30 minute meals. <laughs> okay, so I'm flipping the burgers. These look pretty good. And these are chicken cordon bleu burgers, which means there's ham and Swiss cheese on them. So I've got this ham and I'm just gonna give it a little fry. She used what she calls Canadian bacon, which is just back bacon. But I don't, <laughs> in Canada, it's not that easy to find back bacon <laughs> sometimes. So I just got regular bacon or regular ham. So Regular ham, I got regular ham. Quick fry, and then I'm going to get the Swiss cheese from the fridge. So this is Gruyere, which is one of my all-time favorite cheeses. Mmm, this is nice. I think I'll just thinly slice it. 
bit of a rind there. Oh, ham first. Ham goes on the burgers first. And then I'm actually just gonna check the temperature on the burgers because I don't want to undercook them and they're pretty thick. I'm gonna use my thermal pop product placement. <laughs> So it's 140, so they still need a bit of time. I think I'm gonna wait on the cheese. And I think I will stick a little lid over top of these to just hurry them up a little bit. And by lid, I mean an upside down brownie tin. Now, in Rachel's episode, she made this little weird dessert too, which I'm not a big, I just wasn't really feeling it. It was like this French style dessert that was supposed to mimic eclairs with chocolate sauce, but it was just like four like chunks of glazed donut that were stuffed with ice cream and then had chocolate sauce on it. Seemed a bit much, but I didn't want to, you know, not do something extra. So I thought instead of my, instead of an eclair dessert, I would do some asparagus extra. So. I'm going to cook some asparagus. I've got a stack of asparagus here. I'm just going to break off the bottom of one to kind of see where, where they need to be broken. And then I'm just going to cut the rest all to that same size. And I may or may not do something with these scraps. That's all. And then I'm just going to, throw these on the grill with the burgers. Get them a little bit charred. You getting that? Okay. Sprinkle a little salt on them. And I'm gonna check the potatoes again. So the potatoes are starting to get nice, but they're nowhere near cooked. So they're going back in. So it's 7.25 and we started at 7.06. So there's officially <laughs> nine minutes left of cooking time. I'm really bad at math. Uh, I don't know if we need all that time. We need the time for the potatoes to cook, but I feel like I could be doing something else. I know, I'll prepare the buns. So I've got, I'm only gonna do two buns because only two of us are eating bun and the third one of us is eating lettuce bun. So that works out. These are nice brioche buns, extra decadent. And I think she only put sauce on one side of hers, but I'm gonna put sauce on both sides. Cause I'm a wild woman. It's pretty mustardy, which you know, I like that. And then slice a tomato. I always cut my tomatoes in half first so that they're not gonna roll around on me. And while we're talking about tomato slicing, these end bits, have we talked about this before? These end bits do not go on the burger. They just can't. You can't have like round, glossy, slippery 
dome bit of tomato on a burger. It just it'll just slip right out. It's a nightmare. So I'm gonna eat those. I have a feeling that the burgers are almost done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna lift my lid here. Those look good. Do a little another temp check here. Yeah, getting close. So. 171, check another one. Yeah, 183, so these are pretty much done. Notice how I check them by poking the thermometer in sideways so that it gets really deep. A lot of people do this and there's just so little area, so you're probably not getting an um, accurate read. It's always better to go in through like the thick part so that the thermometer has lots of meat to work with basically. All right, on goes the cheese. We're only three people, we have four burgers. I don't know what we're gonna do about that, but I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm gonna roll these asparagus. There's a way better way to do this, I'm sure, but I'm <laughs> using my fingers. All right, I'm gonna cover the burgers again. Get out of there. Shuffle these asparagus around a bit so they all get time to cook. And then, I think that's all I'm gonna do with the asparagus. I didn't even put oil on them, just salt. Okay, so let's make the burgers. I'm gonna do a lot of lettuce on the bottom. Make sure to get some crunchy lettuce. And then a good bit of tomato. I like to put toppings on the bottom. I find they just stay on better because like the heaviness of the patty really just secures everything, it seems to. And then a little bit of salt on the tomatoes. This is gonna be for a uh, lettuce wrapped burger. I should have given you some tomatoes too, shouldn't I? Add some, <laughs> it's not too late. All right, these potatoes are really the only thing that we're worrying about at this point. Not worrying, but like they're holding us back for sure. The asparagus are done. I don't need much to happen there. We're just trying to like give them a little bit of flavor, you know? Soften them up a touch. I know you can't really get that. Are you getting the asparagus? Okay, good. I'm gonna check on those potatoes one last time. Cause we're supposed to be wrapped in five minutes. Getting a little worried. I don't think this oven's at 500 degrees. Oh yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait for the potatoes and um, I guess we'll go to another quick commercial break. <laughs> is this fun? All right, we're back and uh, things are coming together. So I'm just gonna plate up the bergs. Oh yeah.
These look great. All right. Burger one. Burger two. Burger three. I'll do this one on the plate because it's going to be more fragile. Those look good, eh? I mean, for this episode, I'm not even really concerned about the food, how good it is. I'm just more interested in the challenge. So, yeah. But also, it looks good. So, there's our burgers. And here's our asparagus, which is definitely a bonus. Put a couple of those on everyone's plates. I love asparagus, like the simpler the better is my motto with cooking asparagus. Little bit of heat, little bit of salt. That's about all I ever want. Give you four and I'll give me four. And I'll turn off this grill because we're done here. And it's 7.35, so we need those potatoes to be ready. Like big time. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my God, it's like some kind of miracle. Look at them. Yeah, they're done. Oh, this is getting hot. Oh, ow. Okay. <laughs> the thing got hot through the cloth. Yeah, they're done. Wow, that was like, they were like raw and now they're cooked. Awesome. Okay, so here's the potatoes. You probably don't want any potatoes there, do you? Just put a couple there and a couple there. And 7.36, we did it. <laughs> that was not as hard as I expected. Okay, so things are a bit of a mess, but... I'm okay with that. We got it done and dinner's ready and I'm thrilled. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, let me know if you wanna see more because that was fun. <laughs> and um, I guess it won't require much editing, which is a, another bonus. So lots of bonuses going on today. Um, comment with your favorite cooking shows from back in the day and let me know how you feel about all the competitions and cook like cupcake wars and things like that. I think it's ruined food TV, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you had fun. I definitely did. And I'm really looking forward to eating this. So I'll talk to you soon and see you in the next video.